a very good morning to all of you. Welcome to this online class of estimation of protein by Lowry method. In this class, I am going to discuss about basics of Lowry method of protein estimation, its principle, its procedures and how to calculate the concentration of protein in an unknown sample will be discussed in this class. Before going to start about this, let us know about proteins. As you know, proteins are the important biomolecules in the living system and these proteins are the structural and functional unit of our living organisms. It is the structural unit of different membrane systems and different organelles in the living cell and also these proteins drive the biochemical reaction in the form of enzymes and also it is act as the different types of growth factors, hormones and these are the signaling molecules which drives the signal transduction process and control the process of growth and development of an organisms. This estimation of protein is an important aspect in many laboratories and different procedures has been used for the estimation of proteins. One of these important method is the Lowry method of protein estimations. So first is the basics of this Lowry method. This method was developed by biochemist Oliver H. Lowry in the year 1951 and it has been used in different laboratories and this is the references of these methods and this Lowry et al. in 1951 reported this method in this journal, journal of biological chemistry. Then principles. This method of estimation of proteins is based on two chemical reaction. The first reaction is the reduction of copper ion under alkaline condition which forms a complex with peptide bonds in the proteins. The second is the reduction of choline co calcium reagent by the copper peptide bonds which subsequently causes a color change of the solution into blue with an absorption range of 650 to 750 nanometer and later on it has been detected by the spectrophotometers. This is the protein peptide bonds of this protein. It reacts with the copper ions present in the reagents then it forms protein copper complexes then later on this protein copper complexes forms reaction with choline co culture reagents it forms a blue color product and the phenolic groups of different amino acids particularly the tyrosine and tryptophan residue will produce the blue color due to the reduction of phospholipido tung tungstate to hetero polymolybdenum blue by the copper catalyzed oxidation of amino acids and its intensity depend on the amount of the aromatic amino acids present in the proteins. The blue purple color form thus differ from protein to protein and the overall reaction is pH dependent and works best in alkaline condition with pH between 9 to 10.5. Then is the advantages. It is sensitive assay which require no digestion of proteins. It is 10 or 20 times more sensitive as compared to the ultraviolet absorption at 280 nanometer. It is more specific and less interrupted by turbidity. It is significantly more sensitive than the anhydrin reaction and burette reactions. It is simple to purpur and can be easily used on small scale in the laboratory conditions and the disadvantages are the amount of color developed differ from protein to protein and it is best work in the lower concentrations and the color is not exactly proportional to the concentration. The first is Lowry reagent or otherwise it is known as alkaline copper sulfate solutions and this reagent is a combination of two solutions one is solution A and solution B in the ratio of 50 is to 1. Solution A consisting of 2% sodium carbonate in 1% NaOH solutions. 
solution B consisting of 0.5% copper sulfate solution in 1% sodium potassium tartrate solutions and it is always prepared fresh. Then the second reagent is Follin Culture reagent. This is commercially available, ready made available in the laboratory and it has to be prepared by diluting this reagent with equal amount of water just before use. Then third reagent is the standard protein solutions and the standard solution of protein will be prepared by dissolving 100 mg of BSA in 100 ml of distilled water in a volumetric flask so that the concentration of the standard solution is the 1 mg per ml. The procedure is the first is pipette out into pipette out into different concentration of proteins say for 50 microliter, 100 microliter, 150 microliter, 200 microliter, 250 microliter corresponds to different concentration just 50 microgram, 100 microgram, 150 microgram, 200 microgram and 250 microgram per ml of protein solutions in a clean glass test tubes and make up the total volume to 1 ml with addition of distilled water. The second is to each tube are 4 ml of alkaline copper sulfate solutions that is reagent C mix well and allow to stand at room temperature for 10 minutes. Third is pipette out 0.5 ml of CO culture reagents or FC reagent and add into the tube mix immediately after each addition. Then fourth point is allow the tube to stand for 30 minutes at room temperature. Fifth point is measure the absorbance of this blue color formed at 660 nanometer in a spectrophotometer. Then prepare a blank tube with 1 ml of distilled water instead of the protein standard solution followed by all additions mentioned above and with 1 ml of unknown solution that is sample and perform the addition in, in case of this standard. The tabulation and in these tabulations the first is tube number tube number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One is blank and another is unknown sample. Then volume of standard solutions, say for it is correspond to different concentration of protein. A gradient of concentration of proteins will be taken. Then volume of distilled water, the respective to, to make the volume 1 ml. Then volume of reagent C, that is 4 ml of reagent C will be added. Then volume of FC reagent, that is 0.5 ml. Then incubation times for 20 minutes. After that, the observancy at 660 nanometer will be observed in the spectrophotometers. After this, taking the observancy, then we have to plot the graph. Then prepare a calibration graph, concentration of protein on X axis and observancy on Y axis and determine the amount of protein present in the given solutions. Then construct a straight line through the point representing the value of observance on these papers. And from this standard graph, we can calculate, we can able to calculate the concentration of unknown protein. Suppose the concentration of unknown protein is this much, then we have to see the uh, perpendicular to this particular x-axis to find the protein concentration for unknown sample or otherwise we can also calculate the absorption coefficient of the standard graph by the equation a absorbency equal to epsilon c l c is the concentration epsilon is the molar extinction coefficient and each point we can calculate the molar extinction coefficient that is epsilon value that is epsilon is equal to absorbency by the concentration. In each point we can find the epsilon, then we have to find out the average epsilon value. On the basis of the epsilon value, also we can calculate the amount of protein present in the unknown sample by the concentration of unknown sample is equal to the absorbency divided by the epsilon value. Then we can very easily calculate the concentration of unknown sample of proteins. So this is all about uh, the methods of estimation of protein by Lowry method. If you need 
more information you can go through this link you can find some text material of this methods and thank you all and if you have any comments or you can any doubts you can write in the comment section and i request you uh, please don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel thank you thank you all